Hello and welcome to this Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a Flappy Bird clone uh, called Flappy Bat. So let's give you a quick demonstration. Here we go as the start screen. When we click start uh, we've got the uh, normal sort of screen that you'd expect. Uh, you've got a bat that flaps when you click on it and it flies up and down. Uh, you've got to get through as many of the posts as you can. Each time you get through the post, uh, then your score increases by one, and you keep on going until you crash into the pillars. So I'm just demonstrate that. There you go, and it says game over, and your score is two. Uh, now this is a nice, easy tutorial. It's quite straightforward, uh, but it's quite fun to do. It's quite a fun game to play. So let's get started. As always, head over to Scratch. Uh, go to scratch.mit.edu and click on new in fact let me show you that there we go here we go scratch and create there we go so excellent good brilliant uh, we'll get rid of scratch the cat for the moment because we don't need him and the first thing we're going to do is we'll create your start screen so what we'll do here is uh paint a new sprite um oh no that's not right that's not right let's get rid of that delete that we'll pick a sprite from the library and we're going to use the letters uh, to create Flappy Bat. So the first letter we're going to use an F, which is great. So the first one you create a new sprite, it's an F, uh, using the uh, sprite from library. Then click on Costumes and keep clicking on Choose Costume for Library and adding, adding all the letters that you need. So F, L, there we go, we'll go all the way through A, uh, letters. Uh, P, which will be there. Uh, you only need one P because we can duplicate it. Uh, y, there we go. Letters B. I uh, don't need the A because we've already got that. And we need the T, which is here. There you go. So you got Flappy Bat. Then what you do is click on the F, uh, move him over to the left a bit about there. And then what we do, cheeky little technique, is we just drag in each of the other letters as we need them, and it uh, drag it onto the original costume, and there we go, Flappy B A T, Flappy Bats. There we go. So there's our start, our main start title. We'll just move that up a bit, which is great. Um, and there we go, get rid of all those. Get rid of all the other costumes now, you don't need them. There you go, Flappy Bat. And what we'll do here, uh, click on text, change your font to scratch, and we'll type here, click to start. Good, there you go, so there's our little click to start bit. Um, but we want to make that into a button, so we'll just click on the ellipse tool. Draw an ellipse around it, which is great. Uh, and there you go. <clears throat> that will do. I'll make. Uh, I'll click on the reshape, and I'll be able to make it a little bit less rounded. I like things looking a little bit uh, more odd, more hand drawn. There we go. Perfect. Uh, we'll click on the uh, color tool, and I'll give it a nice clear white background. Because I've given it a white background, you'll notice um, that my text has disappeared. The reason being is this button is on top of the text. So all we do is click on the Select tool and click on the backer layer. There we go. Perfect. Brilliant. So now we've got Flappy Bat. Click to Start. So that's our Start screen sorted there. So let's call that Start Screen. Good. There you go. And what we'll do is we'll say, OK. At the start of the game, uh, show, because we're going to show this sprite, switch our costume to the start screen. There we go. And that should show me on the start screen. What I will do, though, is I'll click on the, um, actually, oh, go back to our start screen. And what we'll do here is we'll say, OK, when this sprite is clicked, we'll hide it, because we don't want this, uh, we don't want that screen to show anymore, and we'll broadcast, um, a message which goes to everybody. This is a message that goes to all the sprites. It's really useful. And we'll call it Start the Game. Start Game. There you go. It doesn't matter what you call it, but I'm going to call it Start Game. So let's have a look. So hopefully now we press Start, it shows. When we click Start, 
it disappears and more importantly this uh, start game is broadcast so let's click onto the stage and let's just make this broad uh, this backdrop a little bit more interesting so click on the uh, fill with color uh, we're going to go click convert to vector I like vector it's better um, oh no cancel that because we're in the background leave it on bit, uh, bitmap mode and go on there and let's go from a vector not vector go from that color to that color or two separate colors I don't know which one it's going to work let's try that and we'll click on that bottom gradient there hey that looks okay doesn't it choose whatever color gradient you want it doesn't really matter I just like to go for something nice and subtle that really makes it pop so there you go brilliant so now when we click start it's all there click to start and when it starts uh, there we go it's all gone brilliant good so what should we do next let's do the uh, let's do our bat that goes up and down so what do we do here uh, choose a spike from the library I'm just going to use the bat you can use whatever you want really but I'm going to use this bat 2 for the moment uh, there's our bat 2 let's move into where we want which is about there maybe about there uh, it's a bit big so let's make him a little bit smaller yeah maybe a little bit smaller than that you need to experiment with this and it, you have to try a few different options um, before you can decide on which one works for you but uh, we'll start with that size that's okay now what I will do though is uh, I noticed when I was uh, trying the tutorial out before is these wing tops and these wing bottoms here they're quite high and they're quite low which means it does catch on the um, it catches on the pillars that you go flying through a little bit too easily so what we'll do is we'll click on the reshape let's click on this bat and we'll just bring them down a bit lower there we are bring them a bit lower there you go just you have to be subtle here just take care but just a bit lower there and let's click reshape we'll make it a little bit higher there you might have to play with it see what works what doesn't work um, let's try that so hopefully now yeah so we've got a bat that still flies uh, it still looks like it's flapping but the wings don't go up and down too much above the body so it catches on the pillar too much there we go excellent good so there's our bat we might as well start coding him so what are we going to do okay well what we do here uh, when we receive the start game we need to show that bat because he might be hidden for some reason uh, and we're going to make him drop down slowly so the way we do that is we use a loop a forever loop and we say okay let's just take his y coordinate um, it's y is his up and down coordinate uh, at the moment it's here in the middle in fact if you look over here it tells you his exact y coordinates and if you notice if I drag him if you look at those coordinates again they go up or they're down the middle there is 0 that's 180 y that's minus 180 y uh, x coordinates were similar but that's minus 240 because it's quite a bit bigger across and that's plus 240 um, so what we'll do is if I actually what we'll say is okay at the start of the game let's uh, set his y to 0 in the uh, dead center and forever we'll change his y by minus 1.5 that'll make him drop slowly and let's try that once we click oh there you go you can only see the first problem there is my bats in sight at the start of the game so what we say is okay when we press start let's just hide him uh, let's hide him there we go so now when we press start it's hidden click start and there you go he's slowly dropping to the floor when we start the game brilliant good so he's dropping down slowly now what we want to do is we want to say okay we want to get him flapping uh, which is nice and easy similar sort of setup when I receive start game uh, in a forever loop uh, and we'll just get him to flap and the way we do that is we use the next costume block there next costume uh, now if we do it there you'll see wow he's going a bit crazy uh, he's flapping a bit too fast so what we do there is I'll just wait 0. Let's try 0. 0.3 seconds a third of a second let's have a look there you go so he's sort of flapping you could change it to however you want but I'll do about 0. 0.3 uh, so he's flapping away quite happily which is good 
Um, which is perfect. So now he's dropping down and he's flapping. What we need to do now is we need to get him to go up. Okay, so when you press the mouse button, so uh, when I receive start game, there we go, forever. Again, another forever, putting it separate loop, forever. And what we'll do now is we'll say, okay, if the mouse is down, there we are. If the mouse is down, we'll move him up a bit. Change his Y by 15. Change Y by 15. Good. So let's see if that works. <clears throat> so there you go. So it sort of works, but if I hold the mouse down, now what you get is you get this, uh, the bat going a bit crazy and going straight up to the top, which is probably going to make things a bit too easy maybe or a little bit too hard i don't know so we need to stop that what we need to say is okay if you press the mouse down then change him up by a bit but then you need to wait until uh the mouse is no longer pressed so how do we do that well same as before but this time we use the green not button so we wait until it's not pressed down so that will force you it'll only do it once per click and there you go you can see it now you probably hear me clicking away uh, it will force you to click multiple times. Now these numbers, 15 minus 1.5, you can mess around with those uh, however you want to. Um, but I'll leave those there for the moment. So there's our bat um, largely done. There's probably a few bits and bats to go, but that's pretty much it um, for the bat. Next one, let's move on and let's do our uh, pillars that move across. Uh, for the pillars, we're going to paint a brand new sprite because there's nothing there in Scratch really that's going to work. Uh, and we're going to use vector mode, convert to vector, because it gives us a little bit more freedom. And um, we'll click on a rectangle, draw us a rectangle there. Oops, actually, let's just, yeah, that'll do. There's a rectangle there. And then we'll do, so there's one rectangle. Oops, don't know why it's doing that. There's one rectangle. Try to put them in the middle of the screen, I think. That should probably do his best there. And then we'll do a little bit of a rectangle there, which is good. And then we'll get our colours, which are probably there to there, maybe. That might do it. Uh, again, use the gradient. And there you go. There's one of the pillars. Now, looking at that pillar there, um, all, all the pipes as they are from Mario, I suppose that's really what they are. Not Mario. Um, yes, Mario. There we go. So that's probably about the size that you want for the top pillar. Um, there we go. We're going to want to put that at the bottom as well. So what we could do there is just copy it, Control C, and then paste it, Control V. Uh, move it down to the bottom, and then we'll. Oh no, we can't use that flick because that flipped the whole thing. Grab it from the bottom there, and just move him slowly up. So now. There you go. You can see we've pretty much got this, um, the first of the, the first of the pillars done, which is great. So there's our pillar. That's all sorted. Uh, there's a nice middle pillar, uh, which is brilliant. And now what we need to do is we need to get it moving from the right slowly over to the left. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we do here is to say, okay, uh, let's have a look at the start of the game. When I receive start game, there we go. Uh, we're going to hide. It sounds a bit odd, but we're actually going to hide this sprite because uh, we don't want the. Uh, this is like the master version of the sprite. We don't want it to uh, show uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to use him and we're going to clone this one and keep repeatedly putting him on there. Rather than create ten sprites and alternate, we might also just clone that sprite. So we hide him. And then what we do is say, okay, uh, forever, because we're going to have to keep putting pipes on until it dies. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a clone of myself. So I'll just create a clone of him. And then we'll wait, uh, let's wait eight seconds or something for the moment. We'll look at that in a bit. So every eight seconds, what's going to happen is this pipe is going to create a clone of itself. But the clone is going to be hidden. So... Where we are. When I start as a clone, which is down here. So when you start as a clone, what we're going to do is we're going to set him his Y coordinate 
if it because it should be to the center anyway but we'll set its y coordinate to the middle vertical so it should be in the middle of the screen um, and what we'll do is we'll set its x coordinate over here somewhere so his x coordinate let's set that um, in fact, no, we can't set his x-coordinate. What we'll do is we're going to create a variable just for this sprite. If I actually it'll just be for that clone called my uh, my x. And that's the x of this particular one, the x-coordinate across. Uh, for that sprite only. And we'll start his x uh, for that sprite only at 240. Uh, which will put us right over this side of the screen. And then what we'll do is we'll show because I'll put him over there. Now if you start that, let's see if that works. Start, hopefully. Oh, you can't see it yet. Um, but it will put him over to that side of the screen. You won't actually move him yet, because I've just created a variable. I've not actually changed his X coordinate, which is why it's an orange one, not a blue one. But that's okay. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, we start over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving slowly left. So... Uh, let's have a look, repeat, we'll use a repeat until, and we're going to repeat until this my x value is less than minus, try minus 200 or something thereabouts. So repeat until uh, there's a less than my x, so repeat until my x is less than minus 200, we'll try, uh, we'll try minus 200 and minus 200, we'll try that for a Okay, these values, we're going to tweak them, but let's probably get somewhere near. Um, and what we'll do is we'll set my x coordinate, so set the x coordinate of this sprite to whatever my x is. There you go. So you start with your my x at 240, repeat until, and then set my x to whatever the value it is at that moment in time. Of course, what you're then going to need to do is you're going to need to decrease, uh, change my x by, let's try minus 1. So it will slowly be moving to the left. Let's have a look. Let's try that. So we click start, and there you go. Perfect. Let's try that again. Click start. And as you can see, he's slowly moving to the left-hand side, which is good. Now, and let's just do that now. And it should, every 8 seconds, create another clone. Let's have a look. There you go. Perfect. Good. So every 8 seconds, it creates another clone. Uh, and it moves it slowly to the left. Now, next bit. We, at the moment, we've already got one costume, which is a bit boring. All our pipes are going to go in the center. Um, you can see that. Actually, if I just change this to 4 seconds temporarily, or 2 seconds for the moment, you're going to see that all my pipes there, they're all in the center, which is a bit boring, really. It's not um, its not really what we want. It needs to be in lots of different verticals. So how are we going to make that work? Well, what we need to do now is we'll just duplicate this costume. And where are we at? We'll just tweak the bits like that. There you go. Now, what you're probably going to have to do as well is just sort of squish these bits down or move them back up. Uh, the long bits doesn't matter too much, but these shorter bits, it probably looks a bit weird. So there you go. So that's got one there now, one there. We'll duplicate that one, and let's flip it. So now we've got one there, one there, one there. Uh, duplicate that again. This time, we'll bring it all the way down towards the bottom, almost completely down. Oops. Uh, it's a bit annoying. I had to zoom in there to get that to work. Uh, obviously, made it a little bit too small. There we go. Zoom out again. There you go. And move that bit down. Move the whole thing down. Just squish that bit down there. There you go. So now we've got one there, one there, and again we'll duplicate that and we'll flip it. So now we've got six possible costumes to choose from. 
And we need to make sure at the start of uh, whenever that it gets cloned, what we do is we switch to one of these. And the way we work this, the way we achieve that is... Oh, no, there's only five costumes, don't mind. Uh, oh, why have I done that? Give them a number each, like one, two, three, four, five. Question one, two, three, four, five. There you go. And now what we do is you say, okay, when I start as a clone, we'll switch to costume. Switch to costume, but not a particular costume. We'll use random and pick from random one to five. So now, hopefully, <clears throat> there you go. You can see it. it's starting to work. Obviously, I'm going to change that two seconds because this is now an impossible version of, um, of the game. But you get the idea. You can see where it's starting to work. So we're getting there so far. But now, as you can see, whenever our clones get all the way over to the left-hand side here, they just stop, which isn't much use. Uh, now, it repeats until it gets to minus 200, uh, and then nothing happens here. So what have we got to do? Well, what we do here is we delete this clone. Let's try that again. So now, hopefully, this time round, um, let's just leave that. Leave our bird flapping around. And there we go. You can see now, when it gets to the end, they just disappear, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Good. So. They're all working. Also, though, what we want to say is, okay, when it does get over here and it disappears, we need to increase our score. Um, where's this? Let's go. Let's just hide that. Thank you. Uh, we need to increase our score by one. So at the start of the game, the score is zero, but then it increases. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is now we create another variable. Call this variable uh, score. Uh, make sure it's available for all sprites. Uh, click OK. Good, score zero. In fact, actually, at the start of the game here, when green press, the green flag is pressed, let's make sure we set the score to zero uh, so that it resets it at the start of the game. And then all we need to say here is, okay, just before we delete that clone, uh, obviously that means it's got all the way to the left-hand side, so we'll just change the score by one. So now, hopefully, let's see if that's in action. So what should happen now? Now, if you notice, there's some little artifacts here. I'm going to, have to make sure we get rid of those in a minute, because uh, those are going to cause me problems. I don't know where they've come from, but I'll make sure to delete those. There you go. You can see now, as those pipes get across there, the player's score increases by one. Brilliant. So let's change that to eight seconds, because that's uh, a little bit uh, too much. Let's just go back. Ah, oh, you can see those little artifacts there. Let's just delete those. Make sure they're gone. Uh, otherwise, you're going to come up with all sorts of problems, I suspect. There we go. Make sure there's none left. I don't think there's any more left there. Oh, that's the one that he's pulling right down to the bottom, isn't it? I wonder where that went. So now we've got all of those, which is good. Um, we also need to have a system that says, OK, if I'm touching the bat, um, if that pipe's touching the bat, then it's game over. So how do you do that? Well, that's quite easy. Inside of this repeating loop here, you just need an if statement. And the if statement is just going to say, okay, if I'm touching uh, the bat, bat2, then we'll broadcast game over. Uh, we haven't said what game over is yet, but we know it's going to be game over. So let's call it game over, which is great. Good, broadcast game over, brilliant, good. So what does game over mean? Well, it means that all these need to stop and we'll get rid of those. He needs to stop and we'll hide him. And then this needs to change its screen. So when I receive game over, there we go. When I receive game over, delete this clone. Uh, there we go, I'll do it. That should be fine. So I'll delete uh, that clone, which should delete all the clones, because that'll, that'll take for all of them. That. Uh, when I receive game over, where is that? When I receive game over, we'll hide the bat and we'll stop all the other uh, stop all the other scripts uh, on this sprite. Stop all the scripts in the sprites. So that should stop all those. And this one, costumes game over. 
let's create ourselves a new costume. I'll just type game over this time, but you can obviously use the same technique as we did before um, to do a fancier version, but I'll just show you game over. I'll just do a simple type version for the, for the moment, for the sake of the tutorial. There we go, game over. Change that from costume one to game over. There you go, game over, which is good. And then what we'll say is, okay, when I receive game over, switch the costume to game over and show. So hopefully now we should start to have a game that starts to work. So let's just check this. We are eight second delay. If it hits it, game over. Ah, okay, okay, so why has it done that? Okay, in that case, what we'll do, um, when I receive game over, delete this clone. Uh, have we got stop all of the scripts in this sprite? Uh, stop of the scripts in this sprite. I wonder if that will work. Uh, let's see if that works. Is that working? I think that's working. Let's just try that again. Um, but this time I'll make sure that before we stop the other script, let's make sure I actually get through here and the other one appears. Yay, there you go. So that's working. I don't know what went wrong there, but obviously it worked to stop the other scripts in the sprite as well as delete this clone. I don't know why I was doing that. There you go. So it says game over, which is perfect. Um, in fact, that's pretty much done, isn't it? Actually, if there's a lot left to do there, let's just try that. So, when you press start, there's Flappy Mark. Click to start. There's our bat. Make sure that works. Obviously, you want to mess with the time delays between each one. You're going to mess with the speed of the, that they're moving at, the time delay each, each, uh, between each pipe, etc., etc. Um, you can mess with all that as you want to to get it working at the right speed. Uh, I think eight seconds is probably a little bit too long to wait, so I might want to try six, but you, you just got to mess with it. You want it to be the shortest possible delay that's actually really workable. That way it's... Um, the most challenging game or you could say um, you could do other things as well so for instance uh, we, yeah, I think is that gonna work oh yeah I think sweet sort of that's yeah so I think sweet spot of that six seconds there is perfect isn't it and um, in fact that is just working fine now that's brilliant there you go done so there's flappy bird um, in terms of improving it, uh, I would definitely add some sound effects, some background music. Um, so sound effects when you click on the flap, uh, sound effects when you score a point, when it's game over. Um, I'd also look at making it harder. So what you could say here is you could um, set it, this as a variable, uh, and every time that you uh, your score goes over 10, like 10 to, in each interval of 10, then the waiting time goes down from 6 to 5.9 to 5.8 or something. So it gets harder and harder and harder as it's going along. Or if you don't want to choose lower the waiting time, you could um, change the, uh, instead of doing change my X by 1, you could create a variable called speed, and that speed could increase each time so it goes a bit faster. Um, but that's, uh, there's loads of things you can do, but that's your basic, um, that's the basic tutorial for you. Uh, as always, if you like the tutorials, make sure you do subscribe, uh, take a look at my other videos. Um, there's loads of easier ones that go right through to complex uh, like tank games and stuff like that. Uh, any problems, any comments, suggestions, requests for future games, just uh, pop a comment in the YouTube feed. Thank you very much and enjoy the tutorial.